All right. Hi, everyone. I am here with the amazing Miles Johnston. Um, I'm gonna I, I insisted that that's how you introduced me with that adjective or I wouldn't appear here. Yeah. I appreciated all of the emails uh, <laughs> insisting on that. That was good. Um, for anyone in my audience who doesn't know Miles, uh, he's a fantastic artist. Uh, he does all sorts of things, oil paintings, graphite drawings, watercolors, ink drawings. Um, he, If you don't know his work, you would be well served by going and looking at it. I'll have links in the description to all of his various uh, pages. But Miles and I are here to talk about AI, I think. I think that's our big interest right now. But um, just for anyone who isn't familiar with you, Miles, do you think you could just give a little introduction to you, you know, what kind of art you do, what you're interested in, just so that people can sure. get a feel for you? Yeah, I, I think, well, thank you for the kind words. That's nice of you to say. I'm also excited to talk with you. I love, yeah, you're a fellow lover of the pencil, which is always exciting for me. Oh, yeah. But um, no, I mean, I guess I uh, think I sort of always love to draw like most people and um, stumbled across, I, I feel like I sort of grew up just kind of hitting the internet when forums were at their sort of, I mean, they felt like a golden age to me in hindsight. I think people will tell me it was even earlier than that, but around 2006, I sort of got online and that was kind of where I had that moment of, uh, you know, realizing that you can get better at art to skill you can practice and Mm -hmm. I kind of always bounce around between hobbies, but for some reason that one stuck. I got really obsessed with it. And um, I have a sort of, it still feels weird calling it a career because it feels very unintentional and unprofessional from my perspective. But I, I, you know, I always wanted to be, I always used to say that I wanted to be a concept artist or do something in the entertainment industry. But I think that's just because I thought that was how you made money as an artist. And, um, you know, I ended up going to an atelier instead of university, which is the sort of classical art style education, a lot of art drawing. And I think that's where I really fell in love with, uh, I sort of really realized that I wanted to make art that was the end product in and of itself, instead of, uh, you know, in service of creating something else. I wanted to make drawings that would be seen as drawings. And, um, yeah, just kind of through, I mean, it was, a uh, you know, 10, 10 plus years at that point of drawing all the time. I kind of stumbled into having a fine art career, I would say. Um, I mean, really, I was sort of like, I, I mostly make my living selling reproductions through social media, you know, Instagram or whatever. But I'm just, uh, I broadly put it under the label of surrealism, I suppose. But I'm basically trying to just make at some point I realized I just wanted to make artwork that kind of lined up with the kind of uh, what I wanted from art in other mediums whether it was movies and music and whatever I, I think me and my friends and my brother we always you know connected over artwork I think more than anything else mm -hmm. sort of the sharing of music taste and that was a lot of how we would indirectly talk about what we were going through and uh you know explore your sense of identity and what it meant to be a person in the world and at some point I realized like you know I love human creative expression in all these different forms and everything I was drawing was me trying to compromise to be hireable or you know what I thought people wanted to see from me and I think the moment it sort of started becoming a you know, to feel like a career and feel like I could support myself with my art was when I sort of gave up on trying to do that and just started trying to make stuff that I found yeah. interesting. So that's a really needlessly long introduction. I no, mean, yeah, I, I just go, I do, I feel, finally feel comfortable just calling myself an artist, I suppose. But um, That's great. <laughs> that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot of um, overlaps there in the journey. I mean, there's a whole other conversation you and I could have there, I think, about how people who just kind of enjoy drawing in our current era kind of got funneled into entertainment yeah. design and things like that. And there's a lot of knock-on yeah. effects to that. 
but um, and not to knock not to knock that as well i mean i sort of no of course not I'm, I'm not trying to create some hierarchy i just genuinely wasn't very good at it to be honest you know mm. like i i look back on most of my work as an illustrator and it, it's just very clear that i I, I had a lot of trouble really trying very hard for anyone else's <laughs> IP or projects generally. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, maybe my interests had drifted away from wanting to do that so much, but I, I mean, so many of my favorite artists are industry artists and so many of the people that shaped and, you know, ignited my passion for creating stuff come from there. So I sort of always feel like I have a couple toes dipped into that world and a lot of peripheral, you know, friends and online contacts. But so that's why I say it's kind of, it was a very accidental move into fine art. It's kind of, I, I don't really feel like I've fully figured out what box I belong in. I, I really do feel like I somehow cheated the system and have basically continued to just draw in my room, you know, in air quotes and yeah. somehow that pays the bills. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I think that it's, it's, it's a good bit of background for where we're coming from in this conversation. Cause I obviously have some really clear biases and I'm like, absolutely not an expert in AI art. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm also not sort of fundamentally, I was thinking about how I wanted to approach this conversation with you after watching your video, because I, um, I sort of don't, I don't want to sit here and pretend to be an expert on things I'm not an expert on. I'm just, mm -hmm. if anything, I want to sort of, I had a few questions and thoughts. I just thought it would be fun to run past you in a kind of yeah. forum like this. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions for you too. Uh, again, not to get too bogged down in um, personal history on my end or anything, but just to give a little bit of context. I've been a fan of yours for a long time and I, I bumped into your work online back in those, in those salad days, you know, uh, conceptart.org yeah. and things like that. Uh, I actually can't, you know, I can't remember the first time I saw your work. I think it kind of was always in the peripheral in those environments. It, it was just like an mm. ambient part of that, but I mm. do remember being aware and kind of watching you make the transition from being someone mm. who was going for entertainment design and then mm. instead going into more your thing. Um, yeah. I personally found what you did very inspirational for me, actually. I mean, you were you were one of the people who opened up in my mind that a move like that was possible or mm. that you or sort of that people with really a broad base of interest were being funneled into entertainment design and things yeah. like that. Um, so I always found you very inspirational in that regard. Like I said, I've always been a big fan of your work. Um, when you had a Patreon back in the day. I remember I, I was going to say you, when I found out you were a patron and I remember everyone was sharing their work. I remember you in particular, I had the biggest imposter syndrome of like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I got nothing to teach you, man. You're really good at drawing. That's funny. No, because, uh, yeah, I felt like I was learning from you constantly. But yeah, so uh, it, it gets into a bit of just, you know, autobiographical history. But yeah, I was on your Patreon. Um, we talked a few times on your Discord. Um, you you were doing some interviews and things back then. I was always listening to those and hearing about your journey. So um, uh, for just again, for anyone who isn't familiar with Miles, please go look at his stuff. I mean, you I mean, you, you know, you're very popular. On social media, uh, I I I don't want to paint too I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but you're one of the people who, for me, has been very inspiring. And in the idea that you can become extremely popular for just doing what you want, mm. right? You, I, I, I always I, found, yeah, I've, yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's yeah, nice. That was always it, the goal somehow. Yeah, I, I from uh, again, it's just just from from the outside view, it's very clear to me that you were always very thoughtful about not feeling pressured into doing a certain kind of work or being pigeonholed or. Um, well, I think it's being... good that I managed to maintain some illusion there <laughs> because it's the same as everyone else. I mean, it's just filled with 
self doubt and confusion. It happens it's to all of us. Kind of miraculous to me that it's all, you know, worked out. And and I think to pull it just because I do have less time than I would like tonight to pull it into the conversation. I think that's yeah. what's worth laying Let's out. Let's do it. Bias because you know people like us have. Um, you know, the I, I've been, I read a lot of, um, you know, I, I sort of view it as part of my job in a way to just kind of generally be interested in the world and, mm-hmm. you know, read about or learn about anything that's interesting to me. And I've been quite interested in sort of generative AI art for a while. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, going all the way back to those early like Google deep dream images where everything would look yeah. like a hallucination of dog faces. And same with me. That, that was know, the first time I encountered it, was, it. And yeah, yeah, very pretty strong impression. Psychedelic and strange to kind of see this uh, imagery coming out of uh, kind of algorithmic, you know what? I'm just going to use the wrong word. So anyone who's really informed on the topic, I'm sorry if I'm cringily, you know, sound off base, but I, I hope yeah. at least conceptually I'll make sense where I'm coming from. Let that be a um, blanket disclaimer. Wrong terms are fine here. This is two artists talking. We acknowledge we're not software energy engineers. We're not machine learning experts. So, so it's like I I, and machine learning, and you know, a lot of my sort of like uh, interested in ideas around labor automation and basic income, and you know, always been very interested in AI as a kind of broad emerging topic and how it's going to impact society. Um, but definitely this, you know, this last year, I think many people have had the experience of being like, whoa, like it, it is leaping forwards at this incredible mm-hmm. rate. And, you know, just frankly, it's at a place I never expected to see in my lifetime, which I think is often a failure of imagination, for, mm-hmm. you know, kind of exponential trajectories with technology. Yeah. And so my initial reaction, you know, I, I've connected personally with a few of the um, sort of like bigger some of the earlier accounts that were posting AI generated imagery on Twitter. In fact, I was, you know, for a while I was sort of like, I really had this, um, there's this guy, I think his handle is actually, I don't, I just say guy presuming, but there's this person, I don't know, AI curio on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And they have, um, like last year they were doing this cool, uh, I, I was, I became so curious about the, oh, what was the name for it? where you could input an image and it would generate sort of like uh, near near variations, mm-hmm. uh, sort of starting with your image as a seed. And this was kind of pre-stable diffusion and, and uh, DALA2 and stuff. And I just found it fascinating to see what felt like, you know, sort of alternative reality versions of my own work. And yeah, I, I, I had this idea, you know, I was, I think I was pitching them manically on Twitter one night, like, oh, you know, it'd be amazing to do a collaborative show where you hang like originals and next to them, you you hang like nine different AI, you know, here are different <laughs> versions of the show from elsewhere in the multiverse, like, because I thought it'd be really fun to see. So, so I'm coming from a perspective of um, genuine interest mm-hmm. in the technology, like yeah. art- artistically, like I just... You know, remove all economic concerns, worries about labor and intellectual property and whatever. And, and um, I just find this stuff fascinating. You know, if we yeah. lived in a kind of post scarcity world where you just like the one thing I don't feel threatened by is that I would ever want to stop drawing because of AI art, because mm-hmm. to me, it's so much about the process of creating something is so intriguing to me that it's kind of irrelevant. Like in some sense, no amount of progress in AI art can replace what I get experientially from creating art. Right. And that's that's not to denigrate it. It's just that they're different things. You know, they're different processes. Yeah. And so it's not in a kind of um, creative sense that it's threatening because I don't care that everything about my workflow is horribly inefficient in, in so many ways. Um, that's kind of the point, you know, it's yeah. uh, what you call a T-lick. No, an A-T-lick activity. I, mm-hmm. I got it the wrong way around. But it's sort of like, you know, the idea of being a T-lick activity is driven towards a, a T-loss, like a purpose. You know, mm-hmm. You're doing something to get somewhere. An A-T-lick would be like dancing or taking a walk in the woods or something with no aim. Right. You know, things that you just do for their own experience. 
And at its best for me, creating art is that kind of experience. Of course, life is complicated and it's also my job and I have yeah. deadlines and blah, blah, blah. So, but at its best, you know, when I feel like I'm at my most sane, I am making art because I enjoy that whole process. So I don't feel sort of, and, and I'm also not saying that to create a hierarchy of that, that that's the best way to create something. That's just my own personal craft, if you know what mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. Um, but, you know, having invested so much of our identity into learning how to do something, you know, the experience of, um, I mean, truly my lifetime, you know, it, it is funny to say, but it's like your life's work to form these skills. It's hard not to, the worry, and especially, you know, I have a family now that has just started this year and that sort of yeah. pressure of like, um, just how, how, how badly you don't want that to go away, <laughs> you know, of course. it's, it's yeah. hard, it's hard not to have that bias shape some of your reactions to this technology. Um, but before we go further, if you'll indulge me mm-hmm. to ramble for 10 minutes, I think that yeah. there's something I was thinking about that I think would set up a little bit of, um, cause I realized watching your video that I had become when you were sort of doing your call to arms, you know, mm-hmm. we've got to d- defend our intellectual property rights. I realized I, definitely in my own head have maybe been a little bit of the, uh, you know, do nothing about it camp. I've sort mm-hmm. of maybe found ways to convince myself um, that maybe, uh, you know, some sort of coexisting future <laughs> is possible. Right. And if I lay out a little bit of how I'm thinking, I guess what I would find interesting would be to get your reaction to all of that, but yeah. it just takes a little Go bit right of- ahead. Go right ahead. That's what I'm here for. I want to hear it. So like a long time ago um, online, I stumbled across this website. I still don't know if it was real or a fever dream. I've tried to remember the domain name. I've never been successful. It was run by some sort of mathematician who had this, I cannot remember for the life of me how I stumbled across a link to it. It was not a popular website. It had like, you know, horrific early 2000s graphic design and but it it was so interesting it was just like the diary of a really interesting person Mm -hmm. and he he would pose questions to himself that he would try to answer from a kind of mathematical perspective and one he had was uh, is there a limit to the amount of images the human eye or human brain can see Mm -hmm. and um and in trying to answer that question he really got me thinking about sort of uh, information and what it is we do when we create artwork and sort of the difference between creation and discovery. And so he he said, okay, well, let's start with a more limited context. So for a modern example, we could say, take the Instagram format image where you have like 1080 by 1350 pixels. And, you know, each amount, each pixel has a finite number of colors it can show on a sort of current generation monitor or whatever. Again, I'm, I'm not an expert. I don't know the numbers, but let's say there's a finite number. It's millions of colors. I think in 32-bit uh, information, if, it's... Uh, if I could just jump in for one second, I just want you to know, this is the main thing I wanted to ask you about when we talk okay. today. It's, it, Sweet. it's Yeah, so we're, we're totally on the right track. So just so you so, know, I'm... I've been thinking about <laughs> this a lot and it's yeah. it's because I've heard you talk about this before. Yeah, you were yeah, very yeah. influential yeah, yeah. on me when you brought this yeah. up years ago. Yeah, because so. I do talk about this a lot. So someone who is, people might have heard this run from me before. But, it, but what I do want about, you to go on it for people who haven't yeah. heard it. So, okay. But just so, so you know that I'm totally on board. Yeah. Because it's uh, to me, this is so interesting. So he mm-hmm. says, you know, um, you can calculate the total possible image space and I forget which way round it is, but it's the area of the image, the amount of pixels to the power of the amount of colors each pixel can display, or it's the mm-hmm. other way around. Again, can't remember, you know, don't assume me, I draw for a living. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> this is why we got into art. So we didn't think have you're to be all good. correct about anything. But, you know, what, what you get, so if you take a little four by four grid that can only do black and white pixels, you know, again, I think that's, you know, four pixels to the power of two or whatever, and you get 16 mm-hmm. possible images. Um, but when you do that for, let's say, an Instagram format image in, you know, a certain image format where there's a limit to the amount of colors 
color information, you get a number that is, you know, horrendously huge. I mean, it's yeah. absurdly huge. It's, you know, it's a number that makes the amount of particles in the observable universe look small. You know, it'll mm -hmm. be several million, you know, it'll be unfathomably bigger than that. And there's a reason it's so big because, you know, contained within every, that finite set of every Instagram image is every drawing you and me have ever done, scanned and cropped in different positions. There's, you know, there's a drawing of Scrooge McDuck wearing the skin of a very real person who did live <laughs> in the Amazon 6,000 years ago, you know, with a small yellow bee in the foreground holding a flag inscripted yeah. on it is the, you know, an actual written out cure for cancer that yeah. would actually work <laughs> and every other text on that flag. You know, if you start trying to imagine, and what we're doing here is a lot like prompting an AI, of course. Mm -hmm. So his, his thought experiment was that it would be fun to make just a true image randomizer that you could hit random on. And all you would ever get in a lifetime would just be noise. But of course, there's just always that tantalizing improbability that some sort of coherent image would emerge. And what's been mind blowing to me about this whole process of diffusion, which specifically actually starts from noise and then, you know, through complicated training, will find the image in that noise, which I find. I mean, there's amazing sort of like uh, alchemical, magical feelings to this whole process too, you know, of sort of that you yeah. can find. So the questions that have stuck with me, right, is that, you know, it's a randomly searching this total space of possible images. And of course, this all gets crazy when you realize that your image can be in a format. And of course, when, you, when you're drawing in traditional media, the limits to color is there's so many variables from you know, the, the medium you'll use, you know, it starts to become, I mean, you are dealing with effectively infinity. But yeah. What's become amazing to me is like, um, there's a question I've really wanted to pitch to someone who's not here, which is an expert on AI, <laughs> which is that- They might be listening, so this is the place. <laughs> I would love to see in the comments if you have a good answer to this. So if we think of just an Instagram format image, if we think of the- finite set of all possible images that is possible there when you've trained a neural net um is there any way to conceivably think about these presumably the total possible latent space i think they call it image space for the neural net is smaller than the total possible image space mm -hmm. but this is the question that gets interesting to me is is ways of um you know, what is the limits to watch what a trained model can produce? These are kind of the questions we're always asking as artists, right? Because it's kind mm -hmm. of a search game. You know, there's, been, there's a new way to search this space now, which yeah. is through prompting and training. There's a new way to rapidly mine the kind of space of imaginary imagery. Yeah. Um, and I think the two interesting questions that I think will still always leave room for human artists come down. Well, actually, there's, a, there's more I want to say on this too. But two things that I want to start with are that this space is so impossibly large and finding the gold, something meaningful, beautiful. You know, this is what we're trying to do as artists of anything we could produce on this piece of paper to make appear on your screen? How do I make something that means something to you, says something to you, is, yeah. has a kind of symbolism, a context, a storytelling, an emotion, you know, whatever it is we're trying to communicate as an artist. Um, I start to wonder that does the ability to search faster, does it actually get you to the really good stuff any quicker? Like, I, like almost to the extent that to be able to produce something that stands out, that is meaningful using generative AI will have become its own process in the same way that there are, that I think they're quite close analogous techniques in music, like sampling is a very good example. And people talk about overfitting in music at this point, some of my favorite music is you heavily involve sampling where you literally lift a passage of music and change it and reformat into something new. So I, I guess I've been thinking a little bit about that. And now I'm going too many different places. But yeah, my question for an AI researcher is like, um, is there any meaningful way to think about 
the limits that a training data set has on an AI and how to, because AIs do obviously have some unfathomably huge set, because presumably if we keep entering new text prompts, I mean, it will, it'll be the end of several universes lifetime before we start, you know, running out of new images to have this thing spit out. Yeah. So, but there's something interesting to me to think about where can't it go? You know, I think a lot of people jump to the conclusion that that uh, AI can't produce a new art style just because it's trained on data. But I, I am actually not convinced of that at all. I think the sort of combinatorial explosion of how you combine and recontextualize things, I, I wouldn't be so quick to assume that genuine, surprising, create you know new creative directions aren't possible. But I'm also... Yeah. I just kind of like wonder if um, I actually think the big limiting variable to let's say your mega feed idea is human attention itself. And like you said, the, oh, for I, sure. I really, yeah. it really struck to me that idea that, you know, of the worry being a kind of irrelevance of any individual piece of content. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I actually think I have less of a worry about the idea that um, AI will replace all other creators so much as I personally have this worry that the actual one-to-many model of an artist who produces something for an audience to consume will mm -hmm. be subsumed by all of us being in our own personal creative you know you can just sort of get lost in generative content on your own like the actual thing right. that i could see being threatened is actually the model of the kind of high priests of creativity that we've <laughs> you know <laughs> that we have become with our yeah like that's that's my worry it's like am i am i like the sort of priest who's saying no you can't have have it yourself it has to come through me only i can interpret it well yeah. it's hard not to see through the bias of how much my identity depends like is truly like pinned to this idea that this is what i've done this is how i contribute to the world well, it's so painful to imagine that that will just stop being interesting to people. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it. Okay, well, there, okay. So there's a lot on the table. So let me let me let me go backwards for a second. Yeah. Let I'll I'll hit what you just said, and then I'll wrap back around. But um, the high priest thing. Um, <laughs> I I get where that's coming from, and I I I know you mean it in in mostly a joking kind of way, but just to address yeah. it because as someone who you know my AI video has a at this point, it's got like, I, I I don't even know, it's probably somewhere over 6,000 comments, some significant amount of it is upset at me. But um, the idea that we as artists are elites who are gatekeeping and that we're, or the high priest kind of idea, I those are brand new concepts. I mean, we are, you know, I, I live in a one bedroom apartment in New York City. I mean, <laughs> artists can barely manage to scrape a few pennies together for their rewards. I mean, I I get where people are coming from with that. And and but I just don't think we're we're actually in that position. And I do think that art is incredibly democratized. I mean, we both understand it. You it's a pencil and paper right? Like any idea mm -hmm. that you have, you only need a pencil and paper. And your feeling that that is not enough is largely just you being prejudicial against the images you're capable of making at the time, right? So yeah, yes and no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mm -hmm. try to advocate for just to make it more, because I know what people say to that. And I think some of it is valid. You know, I, I do think mm -hmm. there's a level of, you know, I have to be aware that like, you know, my ability to spend so much time learning this as a teenager is both a function of luck in several levels. You know, it's it's hard work and it's luck. Oh, yeah. Like it's an obscene amount of work that like obviously part of me wants to take credit for, but I have to also own that, you know, I, I didn't come from a family where I had to be working to help support the family, you know, mm -hmm. and I could just be drawing all day. And, you know, I didn't come from a social context where taking what is a massive risk felt 
so overwhelmingly scary because you know I just felt like I'll probably be fine like and and then I do think I think a lot of what comes up is stuff around um I've been very interested in people who you know I find I I think it's worth not immediately dismissing perhaps like you know people who make the argument about um it just you know there's there are sort of like there's a kind of health luck and a you know, to even like, even though it's a not thousand a percent. physical thing to a sit around percent. and yeah, to, you know, whether it's back issues or hand issues, or there, there are many reasons that a pencil and paper could be inaccessible. I do sometimes, I want, if people have a way to experience the joy of creating stuff in their own way, I, I'm not the person who wants to take that away from them. And I also it's just not in my disposition to jump to a me. Like I have all the same biases about um, that. I do really care. It is cool to me. That's the difference in, you know, when, it, when we look at someone like, you know, the late Kim Jong Ji, like the skill level I have to admit can, you know, is uh, alluring to me, like that kind of mm -hmm. feel, that awe at knowing how much that took but i also don't feel like that defines artistic expression is just I how agree. hard it was to do uh, i'm agree. sure you do agree yeah yeah and so so i often find myself not fully i often find myself a little bit frustrated some of the pushback i see from artists feels shallow in the argumentation and, mm. and this isn't actually calling you out but you know twitter mm. is often insane and the kind of hot take culture leads well, to kind of pe people just saying stuff that just isn't true or very interesting yeah. and everybody just be, you know that's my team when it comes to like the ai art discussion and and i yeah. i actually feel it's more complicated and interesting and i and i do hear a lot of what people say about you know can this not be my personal mode of creative exploration and i do think a lot of the people who make the most interesting stuff in this space do more than just prompting default things you know there's all kinds of ways to learn to yeah i mean it's the, the discussion we're having is the validity of it as a tool it can it be a tool you know well and, it can be for sure yeah yeah well to, and, and to, this is all tabled separately i would say to the kind of economic anxiety that i think a lot of artists feel and and all the is, stuff yeah. about training data and you know i don't really have anything meaningful to add on that i do sort of um it's it's pretty blatantly the very least is quite cheeky <laughs> quite cheeky <laughs> is a stuff, good way to put it stuff you pointed yeah. it out you know again to, to um to to just uh to put the general my personal general disclaimer out there and this is in the ai video that i put out but you know it the ai video is very much focused on um the data the data sets and what mm. is wrong, what is right there, worries about what kind of precedence that sets, and also just how I, it seems clear that there is a a less cheeky way to, to do the <laughs> data sets and to train yeah. the thing. So again, it's like, I'm not interested in taking this stuff away from anyone either. I don't say in the video that these things shouldn't exist. I And yeah. I am as morbidly curious about these things as anybody else might be. I mean, I I also am fascinated by them. Mm. Um, and like I say in the video, like I personally, and this is, you know, a whole other fight, and I, I see the Twitter stuff with people raging about it, but I say in the video, it's just like, I can call it art. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I And I understand yeah. that people are expressing themselves with it. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, if someone's expressing themselves, they're going to feel like they're making art. And if they feel it, it's art. Mm. So I, I really don't have, I truly don't have any emotional walls yeah. up for that. And I already know with a certainty that art made with these techniques will affect me deeply emotionally in mm. the future. And the reason that I, I take these things seriously is because I see what yeah. they're capable of. Right. So the, the, when I'm talking about like the, I think that the discussion about how are we framing ourselves or understanding our 
uh, let's just use the word everybody understands, our privileges as artists, which again mm. is like, is very interesting that that is now foisted upon us because we, mm. that, that, again, that's brand new <laughs> culturally mm. speaking. It's like, it was, it appeared along with this technology that this framing was even available, right? Mm. And again, I just want to, I also am open to those discussions. What troubles mm. me about them is, and I think we're probably tabling this for the conversation, but mm. you alluded to it earlier. What troubles me about those framings is how they easily backslide into ways to be dismissive about the very practical data acquisition, privacy, IP mm. problems, right? When they're actually mm. separate concerns, right? Like, yeah. again, I think these systems are fascinating. People who have not been able to draw 10 hours a day in their room, you know, mm. it, I I want people to explore their primordial creativity. I think it's very mm. important for people to express mm -hmm. their creativity. It gets a little stuck in my craw, the idea that though that the version of that creativity that would be trained on public domain assets is somehow not good enough and that it's mm. like it must be trained on everything mm. it must mm. be allowed to vacuum up the whole cosmos of creative mm. endeavor or else or else everyone's going to turn their nose up at it that mm. it there seems to be some sort of strange standard going on there where mm. everyone well, that's like, a, that's an acknowledgement that the data generated by so many people is important while simultaneously exactly. dismissing it exactly you know? yeah that's but so I, I, just to like you know just talking again about you know one what i love this album by this ambient artist um mm -hmm. william baksinski i think called the disintegration loops and you know he found some old tapes of music and you know one day he noticed that these tapes were leaving dust in his apartment and were falling apart so he kind of created you know the album is these tapes played slowly over and over again he, he like cut them and physically looped them yeah. you know that's kind of physical side so that they would loop in this strange way and then just played them as they fell apart so you kind of hear the music dying you yeah. know it's like and the highs fall off first until you have this kind of you know, low, and so from a skill perspective, this isn't, I'm sure there's some viol, violin nerd out there in the same way we're <laughs> art nerds who feels like, you know, after all they've given, this is getting all this attention. And, but like, it's the moving piece and it has something to say about, you know, the way you hear a piece of music kind of fading away is very human. And so I like, I can't be someone who's a fan of that. And then in my own personal domain demand like i fully acknowledge that i'm kind of like an art nerd you know like i'm yeah. into the nerdy classical realism i you know i i love in a in a, but i i also feel like it's part of my personal mission when i make art that someone doesn't have to be that to get what i'm doing that's right. been a big part of what shaped when we were talking about my trajectory as an artist was realizing I don't want to make work that only appeals to people who already think they're interested in art. Like to me, fundamentally, right. I want to be creating stuff that is in some sense is appreciable because you're a person and it speaks to your humanity. And I think that again gets it. Um, I think when I see the way Okay, so about data acquisition, I think I'm guilty of just being cynical. I just mm -hmm. feel like my sense of how power and technology and everything functions in the world is that if we can do it and it could be better, it doesn't, it just, it's going to happen. I hate to mm -hmm. say it. I wish it wasn't that way, but I feel zero sense of hope about any kind of legal solution like it's just you know with as human beings it's like if we could make it better if we could train it on better data somehow that is going to win out in the way our society is structured and so i'm not ready to i think there's a defeatism to the argument that like i think feel like some people are like you know they're admitting in what they're saying they're like this thing is better than me at mm -hmm. creating artwork um and I have to stop it or I'll be out of a job. And I'm not ready to give that over. Like, I'm not ready to say 
I'm just saying like, hold on. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's faster. It can explore images very quickly, but the goal, you know, I create like 12 things a year in a good year, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's been a very sustainable career because I, a, a big part of my personal, personal ethic when making artwork, everything moves too fast nowadays. You know, the social media yeah. cycle, the sense that we need to be producing new things every other day. So like, all of my favorite stuff was made at a time when you showed up at the salon every two years and maybe bought like two paintings with you and you had yeah. your commission. Like I, I long for artists to have that kind of space again. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to build in how I am setting up my own career and the ways in which, you know, I monetize it is that I, I want to be, I don't want to be on any kind of fast paced cycle if I can help it. And I'm a big believer that one image that really speaks to people is truly worth a thousand of your daily sketches because you need something for the Insta feed, you know. And, and yeah. I, found, I found in my experience with how things have panned out for me that that's been true. You know, I see so much stuff about how to grow on social media and how you're supposed to work and how to make the algorithm like you. And from my perspective, every time I truly have the good fortune of stumbling across a good idea and following through and spending two months on it, that will do, do more than any of my frantic periods of trying to be like a regular poster. Because if it, you know, the right image becomes something that gets reposted all over the internet, people recontextualize it to tell stories about themselves. You know, they weird spiritual meme pages repost it with cringy poetry on it like yeah but like there's a few i would say there's almost like five images out of my whole portfolio that have been the main engine of my growth on the internet that yeah. have done like the bulk of the legwork and um they've really connected with people which is a, a hard thing for people to wrap their point. head around yeah and and i think I, th I think to me, that's where the hope is, is that, you know, I, I often have this kind of like personal mantra of like, in some sense, the more noise online, the more valuable some clear signal is like, I, mm. I'm always looking for those, you know, life to me and everyone is a confusing <laughs> mess. It's stressful. It's, it's so often we're pulled by things out of our control and find ourselves, you know, I find myself lost in a lot of negative emotion and anxiety and feeling like there's never time to have, you know, everyone has those moments in their lives where you take a look up at the night sky or sat around with some good friends or in a, where some, where you really like feel like you're connecting with the moment yeah. properly and you, and it makes sense in a weird way. And so my sort of ethic with making art is that I'm, I'm looking for those moments of somehow emotional clarity yeah. and I don't know if this is pure copium to use <laughs> the term. You know, like maybe this is naive, but like, like to me, it's a sense of like, um, at least how I'm going to frame, you know, because we have to keep, I don't really have a plan B, so I can't really afford to become a total doomer. Um, yeah, I, or at least I don't think you have to. Yeah, no, I, so my, I don't think you have to. I think people like you are, especially well equipped to survive anything that happens honestly i mean you've you, i mean maybe you, it doesn't feel like it to me but i have to believe <laughs> yeah I, well again you you've made images that have really connected on a human level in a rare in a way that is rare for most artists to achieve i've seen them you know because i've been following your work for a long time i've seen them go off and make the round and have deep connections with people and there's lots of artists who have, you know, fulfilling careers that span yeah. years and years who that won't happen once. It won't yeah. happen even one time. So um, I, I do think that, you know, if anyone uh, could get through it, it would be someone like you because you've, you've also created this ritual space for yourself mm. where you keep iterating that, you keep looking for that and you have, you have aligned, you know, this goes back to the way that you've made these changes throughout your life and in your career where you have aligned your incentives where mm. you you should do that you that's mm. going to work for you you have found grooves for doing that and to some extent 
your audience is looking for that. You know, your mm. audience isn't looking for something that you don't offer. They're looking for you to go deep and to connect. Mm. Um, so I, I agree. I don't think you, I, well, I, I don't think you need to be a doomer about it at all. Uh, mm. you, you, you personally, right. Yeah. Um, and, and human connection is the, the more that I've thought about all of these things and learned more about the technologies and what's going on here. Um, I agree that there is some inevitability to these technologies, right? And, mm. and I don't know, no one really, no one does what that's going to do to markets, to culture, to people, to anything, right? Mm. We don't, we don't know for sure at all. Um, human, human connection, the human, human, to, the human to human connection is, I think it's a pretty safe bet that if anything's going to survive, it's that. And it seems very likely to me that it will survive. Um, my, my, my worry, my worries here are really on the, how do we do it well as we go mm. through it? Right. Like if we're going to make this transition, we're all fascinated right? There's definitely mm. incentives there. We've seen other technologies transform this, transform the world, but there's got to be some due consideration given to, there's going to be a sloppy bad way to do this. And there's going to be a way to do this well, or at least somewhat better. Um, and I think a lot of my concerns these days are mostly coming from that viewpoint. Um, and th this is, you know, there's no way I can just hand this emotional cocktail to you on a silver platter, but I personally don't feel like giving up. I don't feel nihilistic about it. I do think there are ways to nudge things better. I think that that's yeah. real. And um, some of that, again, we're, we're talking, you know, we're talking about privileges here, right? Like uh, we're, we're both, we're both, very lucky people. We're both privileged artists who have been able to make their artwork their life, right? And to have the mm -hmm. time in their life. Another one is that, you know, we we meet people through these things and things like that. And since the video has come out, a lot of people have spoken to me, sent me messages and things like that. And um, I think that the current environment around these things really comes off feeling monolithic like mm. we know what the ai people want and how they're doing it and it's artists against them and such like that but that conversation is going to evolve more information is going to come out and one of the things that people are going to find is that even on the machine learning and ai side lots of people don't agree with them mm. with them being mm. like the big models the ones we're talking about stable diffusion dolly the ones made by big companies or that have been open sourced, there are AI, machine learning, um, ethicists, professionals, and other companies who look at what they did and they're like, uh-uh, that's not good. Yeah. That was a bad yeah. call. They're, they're not, they don't share one outlook on what they yeah. did and how they're doing it. And there are people who are not artists, who are in their world, who vehemently disagree with mm. what they did and how they're doing it and do see that it should be done in a better way. So again, it's like, I'm lucky to have that viewpoint because I've heard from these people. Other, yeah. other artists don't have that. So it's another one of my privileges, yeah. but I, I, that stuff is going to come out in the world. And I think that once people kind of onboard that, I think they'll see that, no, there we don't have to be nihilistic about it. And I don't think mm. we need to slide so quickly into accepting like, ah, oh, they screwed us. So, you know, what, what are we going to do? You know, like there, mm. there's nothing to be done. My, my worry is that it's just the kind of tech company model of, uh, you know, you just do something so fast and so hard to put back in the bottle that there'll be a lot of talk about what's wrong with it. But at some point it's become so ubiquitous that it's kind of, uh, it's just talk at that point. You know, that it's, people it's, somehow reach this feeling of like, well, it's already happened now, you know, and then rationalize. So it's, again, that is me being maybe cynical. Uh, I'd be really interested to, because I've, I've actually seen, and like I know people who post a lot of AI generated art who try, you know, who, who've tried coming up with 
lists of sort of like uh, ethical constraints or ways of doing it that have been quite yeah. interesting. And, yeah. and I, I, th- I know a lot of people actually within that space, um, I think would broadly agree, I hope, with what I've been saying, which is that they don't view this as in competition at all, you know, but more mm-hmm. like a sort of parallel. It's just another form of uh, human creative expression. And I do think it's human creative expression, you know, the curation and, and, it, honestly, even just, you know, if artwork is being perceived by someone, there's a certain amount of the meaning being created in the, you know, there's always a human in the loop if it's being looked at, you know, that very act of mm-hmm. us. But I, I'm almost starting to see generative art as more analogous to photography, where there's the latent space of on the latent space, I think they call it, you know, the space of possible images is almost a feature of the natural landscape. And these are different ways of going in and finding imagery from it in the same way photography, you know, you can take a lot of crappy photos, um, but people have over, you know, its lifetime raised it to a degree of artistry that is at this point, I think, you would have to be a bit of a nut to not respect. Um, yep. But it's not hard to find artists who, you know, felt extremely threatened by it. And I don't think it's a perfect analogy. And I think a lot of maybe even some photographers who hate generative art would be annoyed at me using it <laughs> as an analogy. But I've started to think of, you know, this is that creation discovery thing again. If we go back to the set of all possible images. Yeah, you know, please, huge, let's yeah, do finite. Because we, we when, came off of when, that. I'd like yeah, to wheel when back I, to that. When I, you know, when I create a work of art, it was always there as one of the possible configurations of pixels, right? You yeah. know, I, I discovered it in my very human way and through the sort of chaotic associations and preferences and everything shaped by a lifetime of experience and chance even during mm-hmm. the creation of the image which is another big reason why I think process is extremely important because how we get to places in the space of images is entirely shaped by the process. Yeah. And, um, and so I've I guess you I described feel... it before as a, as an archeological dig of sorts, whenever you do your, your yeah. pencil drawings. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a sense of like, um, I've always had the sense that what defines a masterpiece is it feels like it's on a very, it's almost like hit a local maximum where when you try to change elements of the image, you just seem to be degrading the quality of it. You know, yeah. it's, it's uh, because of what, what's really important to remember is that while these AIs right now are incredibly impressive in some formats, um, they are also currently and presumably will get better, perhaps quite lacking in others, which mm-hmm. is that they create the very convincing surface of something that at first glance really looks like a work of art. But often what makes it's easier to see in text to speech, I think, where something feels extremely naturalistic. But I think I've gathered from hearing more informed people's opinions that were still a long way off from the creation of an impressive novel, for example, Mm -hmm. where the interconnectedness of a text, you know, the subtext and the symbolism of events foreshadowing the kind of holding of relevant information across hundreds of pages is is still a long way out of reach. And I do think that there is something similar in the image space that's maybe a little harder to see because I think we're more within images, we're more likely to just like something for having a vibe or an aesthetic, you know, it's Mm -hmm. kind of the aesthetic of cyberpunk. But I think we're forgetting a little bit how symbolically deep and layered a really great work of art is. It doesn't just have the surface of the impressive edges and values and colors and impression of light, but you know, the, placement and gestures of figures might hint at philosophical ideas that were relevant at the time Mm -hmm. Uh, the color and uh, arrangement of things might carry an emotional tone that is ironic within the context of that 
society or might, you know, there's so much you can do to actually make something really good that, you know, someone described, and I was, someone described, um, there's kind of neural nets work on kind of deep associative pattern recognition, right? Mm -hmm. But symbolically, AI, if I'm not misinformed, the space does move so fast, but can lack a certain kind of symbolic common sense. You know, it's definitely cognition or intelligence very different to how we learn. You know, just even the fact mm -hmm. that you need massive training sets, you know, for, for it to learn to recognize a teapot, it has to see hundreds of millions of teapots yeah <laughs> but you show a human child two teapots and they'll recognize other teapots from that point mm -hmm. onwards like the way that we can infer from very few examples by abstracting to a kind of symbolic framework around an object like the i think these differences in intelligence to machine learning represent some of the limits to generated art because mm -hmm. it's it's incredibly seductive how quickly it can oh my God, that looks like a 19th century painting, but you dig deeper and they're not nameable. You know, it's not figures that have nameable characteristics and the choice yeah. of model doesn't mean anything in a social context and it doesn't have anything new to say about the story. There's a kind of sense of, that's why I think it's, it's almost like, I think it's a, an exploration of a natural space, a kind of natural information space. Mm -hmm. And um, and part of me feels like it it might just turn out that, what I'm most interested to see from AI art is new forms of, is not uh, reproductions of things that look like what is already recognized as art, but the new formats of human expression that were previously inaccessible to other media. So like I find some of the animation stuff very impressive where you have a kind of coherent walking cycle of someone, but every single frame is flickering between nearby images yeah. in that space so the hats and clothing are morphing because it's kind of yes that could have been done before but it feels um you know it feels like a kind of new thing to me and that kind of stuff always ends up more interesting to me than like uh attempts to recreate a specific style mm -hmm. um so there's a kind of sense that um yeah a, cer a certain kind of human I think people can easily underestimate. I think we're forgetting how dense a really, and I'm not referencing myself here. I'm talking, you know, true masterworks mm -hmm. where you're seeing like, and again, yeah, I think in text to, you know, text generation, I think is more obvious. Um, again, you know, I was, I've just been trying to read more recently and every time I'm reading a book and, and, you know, there might be just some event or some really subtle thing that you pick up that the author is trying to give you that references something hundreds of pages ago. And I just think, are we actually anywhere close to being able to do this? It certainly you know, seems GPT far. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think there are actually people, I have heard machine learning ex experts who are slightly pariahs in this space kind of wondering if we will hit a kind of plateau with because mm -hmm. the kind of mantra i know what someone who is very into this will say is that it's the size of the training set you know the the output does seem to be exponentially growing you know as these data sets get larger and the computing power gets better it's mm -hmm. very clear that we haven't hit a plateau yet and they mm -hmm. are getting better and better but the question is is, is there a fundamental limit to this technique of machine learning yeah. Like I heard someone once call it association soup is what it all looked like to him. It's, it's a good way to put it. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's uh, yeah, and I know there's been a lot of progress on this in text-to-speech to try to have it solve, like if you ask it simple math problems or simple logic problems, can it infer, you know, how do, how do they answer it? I, f I find it really interesting when, very smart people come up with clever ways to test the capabilities of these things by asking like logic problems to see if it can track multiple objects or, um, mm -hmm. you know, things that a human being would find very easy. Um, so yeah, I, I have absolutely no way to know what the correct answer is there. Yeah. Um, and, and it's an important, I, it's an important question just, just to highlight that. Like uh, I also have heard from machine learning people um that yeah it's it is debatable whether they can improve um even past where they're at now you know i've heard obviously you know there's a lot of 
venture capital talk out there that says the sky's the limit and that um, images can be solved is the way that uh, I often hear them talking about it. But people who don't work at their at their those companies, there's dissenting opinions. You know, they, it it remains yeah. to be seen if they can actually get to the promised land of solving images mm -hmm. and making anything possible. It is possible that they can't improve, right? Based on the mathematics, like mm -hmm. you said, the base technique. And that doesn't mean that a new technique won't be invented, right? Because- No, I mean, that's what people are working on right now is ways to augment. Yeah, I mean, I like literally, can't, I try reading papers on this stuff sometimes and I'm oh, just yeah, like- Me too. I, you, you need a, you know, you need a degree in the relevant field. Yeah, the, there's a reason it's not us artists <laughs> yeah. making these yeah. things. It's because when math. people so, when when you watch a YouTube video on how a neural net works, you can kind of get a very very layman's view, yeah, conceptually on what deep learning is and all of this. But of course, like you know, when they release different models, it, it is the specifics on how that process is done that inform the results. And I, I imagine that a lot of the world's you know smartest people are currently working on these problems because the rewards so. do seem almost infinite but um yeah. i guess yeah yeah to, to take it back a second though maybe to acknowledge something else as well is that it does i feel the frustrate like one i feel incredibly almost a little heartbroken when i see mm -hmm. beginner artists feeling defeated or questioning what they, yeah. you know you have to produce so many years of hilariously mediocre stuff to even get a shot at making anything good yeah. and i worry that for the next generation of people coming up when you can just you can just get something that is good enough you know at, at a prompt the sort of like i wonder if that will just kind of erode a general motivation to learn to draw and create yeah. images and something there worries me that it will become um I don't know. Yeah, you know, I can easily see myself being the old man shouting about doing it by hand or whatever. <laughs> Same. Yeah. But the, the other side of it is, um, I also do feel like it's part of this general trend. In oh, I got to be quiet for a second. The baby's crying. Problem. Just one second while the doors open. I can easily Every, edit this out. It's no sweat. No, 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 no editing. Everyone, be <laughs> quiet at home and pray for their swift return to sleep. Let me just rewind my brain. It's late. Go and ahead. I've drank most of the beer now. <laughs> talking about, oh my God, it's actually going. My my brain is stuck too. Now I can't just, I can't stop thinking about how crazy it is that you have twins. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about new artists being discouraged. And I think, I think you, you got cut off right when you said I'd be the yes. man who would say do it by hand. I've got it. I've got it. Um, so the other, the other thing that I, feel sometimes there's a general sense right that every year under our political and economic framework it's like the screws tighten a little it just gets mm -hmm. harder to live and this kind of sense now that everyone needs a side hustle everyone has to be world class and everything we're all meant to be our own personal celebrities and a lot of what i'm saying is boiling down to like you know if you can there'll be room still if you can make truly you know, world-class art or something, you know, to mm -hmm. use an extremely problematic phrase. But, you know, if you can make stuff that is unusually popular, perhaps there'll still be room. Yeah. And that kind of breaks my heart because why didn't they, everyone doesn't want that. Like, you know, there are a lot of yeah. people who just enjoy a career and they love to draw, but they don't care about being the absolute best they can be. Yeah. It's It's been a way for them to pay the bills, have a great job. It's satisfying. And then suddenly it's like, we're saying, you know, my worry is that that stuff is more fragile to this kind of thing. And that just does feel heartbreaking to me. And it just feels part of this trend of like, I just think that like sucks, you know, Same. and I get, I, it's, it's like, uh, why do we, <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. Why exactly and, would that be a good idea? And I, I hate that my answer to everything is it could be interpreted by someone as like, I love the AI art because now I know I got to grind harder. 
<laughs> it's like it's like there, there's a kind of sick part of me that is framing it like i'm living in some anime now like you know okay now right. i've got to prove that human creativity has some value that can't be captured by the algorithm yeah. you know but i just kind of i know a lot of people will hear this and just be like some people will hear that and might find that inspiring and other people will just be like oh like i like what i do and yeah, you know, and now there's just this massive complication, and it's just got way harder. And for that, I, you know, I'm torn between my love of seeing new mediums, of of seeing the new stuff, and the sense that just like I do, kind of feel like this will, eat, like I got the chance to get to what I do now by doing tons of entry level, small commission stuff, you know, yeah. small illustrations for trading card games on a low budget, like personal commissions. And I do really think that so much of that stuff will be, because it's not like what I was giving them was any good. It was just good enough. And now they have a new cheaper form of good enough. And it's hard to feel totally optimistic about the future of kind of entry level illustration stuff. And yeah. And it makes me question, like, I don't want to live in a place where, like, I got lucky with timing and then the sort of ladder's been pulled up. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, because it can, the timing of your life can really pinball. You know, like, if I look back on those years where I was able to scrape by on certain commissions, if I'd had to take a job that was more tiring and I had less time to draw, like, how much does this stuff, you know, butterfly effects across your life? And what was really a commission for not very much money? was part of building that momentum that led to me, you know, having the time to be drawing and whatever. And so I just want people like, I want, I want people who enjoy using these tools and have found a new outlet for their creativity and who love that to take a second to maybe try to hear the kind of emotional energy, even if people are being a little bit, you know people sending like death threats to twitter ai artists is insane that is insane i don't yeah, think don't that's do that. cool don't do but that. i i do want i want people to try to feel that there's a real pain to committing to something and then feeling like it's just got so much harder for you and it wasn't a month ago now that i've heard of this thing and so maybe like in how you form a picture of where artists are coming from to just try to feel that that's a really valid emotional response. Like even if some people are being kind of a little bit, well, way too far in how they express it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel yeah. like it's important for people to feel that that's, um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. My, yeah. my other long-term hope actually, just to round it off and then I'll be quiet yeah. for ages. It's just this talk of how difficult the symbolic depth would be in some sense we're talking about ai moving towards generalizable intelligence full stop mm -hmm. and there is some part of me that feels like there may be some side to this where by the time images or art are solved in a way that would satisfy me to say no human artist can produce something better it's like chess now will ever mm -hmm. produce the best painting again i start to wonder if by that point so many areas of labor have been broadly generalized that society is forced to move to basic income or Mad Max, you know, like, like the entire, yeah. that, like we might get to some point where by the time this truly makes art unviable under capitalism, it's made all labor unviable. And, you know, in that case, I'll just be chilling on my, eating my cockroach, cockroach milk, chilling on my basic income text and drawing because it's fun, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think you'd probably do better in Stockholm than I will in New York City. <laughs> I think uh, if if the current state is any indication, you're going to have a, a much brighter future there. Look, my um, hope is that even the super selfish rich will realize it's easier to pay for their own security by just keeping everyone fed than it is to hire a security force and not be able to go to Ibiza anymore, whatever it is they like to yeah. do. Like, I think there is a tipping point of automation where the selfish action is not like I'm relying on billionaires being good people, but it will just be self-interested to ensure 
you know, the society is stable. I don't, I don't know if you know, that could be naive, that, but that, that point to me is the one where I, I find you to be on the optimistic side and that's where I fall on the more cynical side. <laughs> I find over and over again, when people, yeah. um, I, in my discussions, okay, I frame them as discussions. It's like, I've had a few discussions, but the vast majority of my feedback here is people leaving me angry comments. So, um, in a, in a lot of them, it, they go to the UBI really quick and the, the yeah. air, the, the vibe of those messages is you shouldn't even be worrying about this now because it will force mm. UBI or something like that. Yeah. And but that could take 20 years. Well, like, what am I going to eat? eat rats in the meantime? In, like. <laughs> indeed. And, and it's still a question, you know, it's, I, yeah. there's, there, I really, uh, again, I'm, you know, I'm in a different part of the world than you are. The United States is, you know, we're a fantastically lucky place, but our, our politics are insanely tumultuous. And mm. it, it seems I don't have much interest in trusting politicians to give me a mm. free livelihood forever um based mm. on based on just the the vibe so i think i mm. i land i wind up landing on the more cynical side there and i don't find the look if, if it's going to come down to relying on that tipping point where it's like it's going to make us have to figure that out then we're going to get there you know if that's really the way it's yeah. going to go that's the way it's going to go but i don't I don't find it a compelling reason to not think about these things now or to try to act on them now no. because it's a lot of, it's a lot of, yeah, I, I experience it as wishful thinking about what mm. people in power will do as a reaction to these yeah. problems. Um, I, I don't, uh, you know, Mad Max is not maybe a little dark, um, but um but uh, I'm not the one with a, a desert wasteland as yeah. their background. Look, I'm, I'm 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 far from you know I I I I, uh, I flip flop a lot. You know, I can be a total Me doomer too. about the future, but I, I'm I am sort of almost I almost have to be an optimist a little bit, or I have mm -hmm. to leave room for the possibility of hope. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like we all got to get through the day. Sure. I do think it at least gives a place to, you know, find some common ground and shared values with people that you may think you are an enemy with, you know, these to sort of realize, you know, that I actually think most of the problems come from the broader pressure and context under which we live, you know, than they come from. Yeah. But I think people have to realize that, like you said, you might be right that UBI would be better or that, you know, I think there are a lot of people in the AI space who will say, you know, I'm a massive anti-capitalist and whatever. And it's like, yes, but th this is impacting real people's lives conceivably yeah, in the very near term. And regardless of our shared values, there's a sense of like, it's not a small thing to have to rethink your entire career. Like it's not yeah. just as simple as like, you know, learn to do something else it's like yeah. like that may be possible but like you know what do you like do we know i just crave a ghibli world where there's just a dude who's the baker in town and he's not trying to run a baking empire he just makes his bread everyone loves him you have a chat in the morning yeah. but you know like, I, like he's not trying to go public with his bakery <laughs> no exactly there's not a bait there's not a bakery ipo he just yeah. loves making bread it's like I want that world too, but we have to think about people's real situations and yeah. at least understand where people's anxiety comes from in the context of that. Yeah. And, um, and we might even share a lot of broad goals for what the future looks like, but the future will not arrive overnight, especially not in our slow moving political systems that don't even seem to really acknowledge or be equipped to deal with this and i think there just has to be yeah. some i i just find people's callousness uh extremely uh it, it it reeks if i don't want to have to think about this you know so yeah. it's just i think it's always the easy option emotionally to be like hey people get left behind you know it happened to the horseshoe makers get over it it's like yeah. would you know I, and it has made me question 
biases I have, you know, of course, it's like, this is our thing. And, you know, when I read a history book about the lovely horseshoe maker losing his 90% of his work to the automobile, you know, it's like, I've probably been the cold person being like, you know, that's just a person in a textbook. And I've probably been the person saying, uh, you know, hey, that's what happens, you know, and and now mm-hmm. it's affecting me and suddenly I care so much and like I'll fully admit that bias. And I think mm-hmm. everyone else will when it comes for them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I think we need to, I think there's going to be more and more discussions around this of what it feels like to be unemployable, you know. But I just yeah. don't think we're there yet with art. I still think that people need to, like if I wanted to give a takeaway to anyone who's an aspiring artist, a working artist, who loves to create, I would say don't forget why we got into this and don't give up your sort of power you have so easily as a creator. Yeah. Like I do think I've always felt that the best long-term shot for success in this field is the one that often feels risky, which is that to radically do your own thing and yeah. uh, re- you know really just make the work that you want to see. Um, and just to rely on the fact that you're, there's probably a lot of people who share your sensibilities and experiences. And you know, I've had the experience over and over again that the more I've lent into work that I wasn't sure if anyone else would even be interested in, mm-hmm. you know, the more you discover that they are. Yeah. Because that's what people want from art. You know, they want, they, they want to see the thing they didn't know they wanted to see. You know, you can't look at what are, is already out there and give them more of it. So. Yeah. I do think the most empowering choice one can make right now, if you can muster the energy, is to refocus on what it is that you have as a human being that makes your work special and not so quickly fall to a point of thinking like, fuck, this thing's better than me and I just need to make it go away. Because it's not yet. You know, They're capable of producing interesting stuff, but there's so much that goes into um making a work of art and i do feel at this moment that most ai art is not particularly compelling it Indeed. has the immediate impression of being very impressive and it's the same stuff that art students always think is the hardest the rendering the technique but that mm-hmm. isn't what makes that's the vehicle for delivering what a work of art has to give which is the the narrative the story the mood the emotion you know, it's this stuff. And, um, you know, if it leads to a devalue of good rendering skills, then they've been devalued in my mind for a long time. Like I've passed the point. Like, I, like of course, like part of me is always personally impressed to see really good art skills. I think it's cool, mm-hmm. you know, as someone who loves to draw, but it's not what makes someone my favorite artist. And it hasn't been for a long time. And in yeah. fact, I have, fol- you know, folders of old inspiration work that just doesn't feel very interesting to me anymore. Because it doesn't Same. say anything to me. Um, I think every artist goes through the true rendering or line work or drawing nerd. Oh my God, look at the quality of the anatomy here. And that stuff yeah. is impressive if it's delivering something cool, but on its own, it's a bit vapid. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think people who can find that in generative art through that process, whatever that is, who can create stuff that has the real impacts have done something good. They've brought something beautiful into the world. And I guess my feeling is that perhaps that is going to prove that so many of my favorite electronic musicians probably aren't amazing pianists, whatever. I don't care because they, they deliver something in their sensibility, in their taste, in their aesthetic, in the way they create a context and body of work and whatever. You know what I mean? They're, they're kinds of labor Absolutely. that go, you know, and, and I think I actually feel like as it matures as a medium, a lot of generative art will become, you know, that's what, because if, if we're talking a world where um, it's hard to, how, how do you as an AI artist become an artist with a body of work if everybody can just do what you do? And I think the answer to that question yeah. is what will be the artistry? the people who find out how to answer that question. Because I'm not saying that to say like, see, you can't do it. I'm saying that Mm -hmm. the people who find the answer to that question of how to tell compelling stories, how to somehow use this as a tool 
you know, will have become analogous to many other art forms that I already enjoy. Right. And do you, do you get what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. maybe my yeah. most optimistic take on it is that, yeah. um, is that, uh, things like storytelling and, and, uh, and the actual kind of taste maker side of being an artist of someone who can, was that Travis Scott line? I'm the glue. <laughs> you know, it's like that acknowledgement that an album like that has a million producers and guest features and whatever, but it's like, yeah, it, it brings it all together. You know, it centers around like so much music. I like, like pop music is all like that. It's like a massive collaborative effort, but the artist is, you know, it wouldn't have happened if they weren't there. Yeah. And I do, I do recognize that as legitimate. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's, I realize I'm coming up to my hour and a half and there's still like a billion things to say, but I guess that's like a current snapshot. I wonder if our conversation will age like milk trying to talk about future technology is so hard. So well, it'd be interesting if someone's listening in a year's time to see if any of this, like what seems relevant and what seems, yeah, you know, I think missing. it's Yeah, al- I think it's almost inevitable that it'll age like milk, but I mean, what what else can you do? I mean, it's a snapshot <laughs> of the time. Um, yeah. just to, re- just to react, uh, I guess we can just kind of close off. I, I don't need to like go hard at one thirty, but I should start. All right. Yeah. Let, let, let's just, uh, let's try to wrap up here with just some closing thoughts, but, um, uh, yeah, there's, it's such a huge and nuanced topic that there's really a million conversations to be had about it. Um, ag- like you were saying about how, an AI artist who finds ways to contextualize it in ways that are interesting. That is the artistry. I'm, I agree with that. I'm open to all of that. Um, I've already shown my cards saying that I don't have any emotional walls up for saying that it's art, you know, for the, for the legal ethical questions that I have, that's just not super substantive, but um, all I want to see in the world is more good art, right? Like I I just want to see more. And I'm radically open to what's possible from wild new systems. I mean, I grew up in New York City. You know, I've I've seen my fair share of strange art openings. You know, I've I've been exposed to um, the most questionable kinds of contemporary art, and I've liked much of it. You know, I I find great value in performance art and installation art and just art, arts that you can't label, just, you know, the, mm. the kinds of stuff that really brings up very strange discussions. Um, in this world that we're in, you know, drawing painting land, I often find people speaking very pejoratively about those things. Uh, and just from my personal upbringing, I've never agreed, you know? Well, actually I did. Mm. I did when I was younger, but I did grow out <laughs> of that at some point mm. after I got more exposed to it. Um, and now I certainly don't agree. I do see that a, a lot of, just the wilder and more far out things get, um, it's much like other kinds of art where there's there's going to be bad stuff and then there's going to be stuff that really blows you away, right? So any mm-hmm. new sectors that can arise that allow for that, um, I'm not going to be surprised when amazing things come out of that and extremely fascinating things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't remember the last time a drawing got to the top of Reddit but uh, uh, AI images of celebrities that had died as if they hadn't died was just at the top a couple of weeks ago. Like it, mm. it will um, affect people and it will produce fascinating things that otherwise, yeah, probably maybe no, no artist using more traditional media would have, it would, would it have occurred to them to do those things? Maybe not, probably not. Mm. So um, I'm very open to those things on, on the points about like the, the anger that's out there between individuals. I don't, I just think that's a horrible idea. Um, There's, there's no way that there's much positive to be gained from attacking vehemently people who are trying to be creative. Right. That I, I personally Mm. see, my issues with these things are systemic issues. I don't have any problems with any particular end users. I mean, uh, end users are reacting to what's out there and they're slotting their ideas into something that has been out there and proffered. Um, I, I don't 
I'm not in that part of the fight. <laughs> you know, the, that, mm. that's certainly a fight that has bubbled up. It makes no sense to me. It makes no earthly sense to me to go after individual users. I mean, the the most the most intense forms of like straight plagiarism or something like that, mm. you know, that those tend to fall on a particular end user. But even there, mm. I'm like, yeah, that's a little, yeah, don't do that. And that sucks and is maybe reprehensible. But again, it's it's tied to the systemic issue. It's tied to the the legal precedents that we're setting for these companies that will spiral out to everything mm. beyond art, right? Like it may, it may wind up being like, oh, well, first they came for the artist and I said nothing. But what happens here is going to set the tone for how every other big data mineable thing gets handled and what mm. is possible there. And even if it, if it's, whatever it's going to do to our careers, whatever nudges we can give, even if we get completely steamrolled by it, those nudges may reduce human suffering as it plows through other careers. Because like we said, mm. there's the there's the inevitable churn of history, but then there's also the family to family, individual to individual mm. suffering that can be produced mm. therein. Uh, and that's, I think that addressing the issues on that level will help individuals and it will also help the way that the churn happens. Like I said, mm. it'll produce some sort of, if we're going to go to a particular place anyway, and I'm not sure what everybody thinks the place is, generalized AI, UBI, like what? Yeah, you know, what's it's the very hard to really imagine. Yeah, it's. I don't think, I think we're doing stuff without a clear idea of an end goal. Um mm. A lot of them, if we proffer them, we're like, wait, do we really, is that really what we want? Um, mm. But whatever it is, whether we're conscious of it or not, um, having as, as sort of defending ourselves as vigorously as possible, as is possible with these chaotic things, I think will help the churn in the long run go the best way it can and hopefully mm. reduce a considerable amount of human suffering because the, there's nothing it's like to be stable diffusion, right? So it, mm. if we slow it down for the benefit mm. of families, stable mm. diffusion is not suffering, right? And, and yeah. any AI system that is produced is not suffering yet. Yeah. As far as and I want to argue <laughs> that users who have enjoyed playing with it don't have the same claim to like the slowing down of something that you're enjoying that has just entered your life is not the same moral claim as the investment a fellow human being has made of all of their life so far. Absolutely. Into field. And I, and Absolutely, I think that deserves, I just think that deserves precedence. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Is I don't that, think so. It's, these things are four months old, but by most yeah. people's knowledge, yeah. you and I have known about them since 2015, yeah. but most people, it's like, it's four months old. It's four months old. I think it's fair enough to say it's completely legitimate that artists want to take a breather and have conversations about where is this training data coming from? Where is this going? What does this mean for me? And people who've really enjoyed, like you said, this four month old. Mm -hmm. new avenue of creativity i think it would i'm not saying it's i can argue it's objectively ethically necessary but i would say it would, it's tasteful it's polite that's a good to way to put it yeah. to consider to consider human to human what people have invested in and what this means to them and even if you disagree with maybe some of their anxieties to just feel where that is coming from yeah, and to see that that is not unreasonable, and the kind of the more troll-like framing of artists as whiny babies who've finally been exposed as you know, like, haha, now we can all do the thing, and you were just born with it. Like that is that is um, that does that's probably the only time I get like a little frustrated when I see um, it is frustrating to see. I think how many people think of art skills as an innate talent that is unfairly yeah. distributed and this yeah. is a kind of just moment of like you know like all the tall people in the world who suddenly 
got upset because there's <laughs> surgery that can make everyone tall or something. Like I think people are viewing a moral equivalence to like you had an unknown right. thing and now you got to accept it's gone. And I, I think that is lacking understanding of uh, that yeah. people might have a predisposition. So, you know, I've taught long enough to see that people learn at different rates and some people, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I'm not a total, you know, I don't, I'm actually not a talent denier. Uh, Same. A hundred percent. And I, and I do think, you know, speed at which you can learn stuff adds up over a lifetime because we've only got so much time. You know, yeah. So I, I do think there is an element of just like in a sport or something, you know, not everyone is going to be Michael Jordan or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think there are elements of that, but I think none of that becomes shown without truly ludicrous levels of sacrifice, you know? Yeah. And uh, I feel like that just has to take, I feel like if the world we want to live in is one where that does mean something. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Okay, sorry, that's my verbal take of saying, you know what I mean? No, I, I absolutely, <laughs> yeah, it's talent, ta the, the talent, the misunderstandings around talent are definitely, they've always been there, but they're re really rearing their ugly head uh, in this conversation. And they're, they're doing, a, I think it's, it's just presented as a false binary, like it's all yeah. or nothing. It's, I think people have predispositions, but especially in art, where actually there are artists who there is a kind of established maybe technical framework for what would make like good art in some senses. And then there are so many examples of people who make livings as creatives who don't do any of that. Yeah. You know, there are like web comic people or fine artists or whatever, who just through sheer style and communication skills or yep. humor or intelligence, you know, can, can, and storytelling. So I actually think in art, the talent question is overblown as well, because it's actually, it's only one way and actually not even a particularly popular way. Yeah. You know, if, we, if we're talking like sort of, you know, if you ask me the height of maybe, God, I sound like, I, this is where all my biases come out of like skill-based art. Like uh -huh. my sense goes back to like 19th century, late 19th century. I don't think there's anyone there's ever been a better set of painters if we're looking through like realism and not like photo realism, mm -hmm. but that kind of specific, you know, that's my bias. That's just what I view as maybe the hardest yeah. thing to do technically. Um, that's not even a particularly popular art movement anymore, you know? Yeah. And uh, so the talent question with art becomes even more irrelevant to me because it's not even unlike a sport where you have to be able to, you know, run fast jump high do whatever like there are so many ways to make a living as a creative bypassing yeah. a lot of the um you know maybe like harder to learn skills as i would put it and yeah. so it's just uh yeah i think i think it's unfair and i think i just i as automation progresses i want a respect for um, this idea that retraining while possible is, is, it's a traumatic thing, actually, I think to yeah. go through It is, and, uh, and there's no need to be crass about it or it's like, you know, this kind of sense that I feel this all the time about civilization generally, the feeling that we've lost the brake pedal and yeah. we wouldn't even know where it is to push it if we could, you know, it, I think I've been really feeling a lot of that around all of this as well. Just like, yeah. like you said, like, what is the end goal actually? Because, you know, the people who run stable diffusion will state, you know, it's the sort of, we're going to get a billion people making art. It's like, maybe they can convince themselves they believe that, but, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's about getting a billion dollar valuation. That's the, the end yeah. goal. You know, like, I just feel like that is where they're coming from and they may provide something that's of value to people in the process. In fact, they'll need to, you know, to do that. Mm. But I, do, I don't believe them when they say that that is their driving goal. I'm not inclined to believe them either, especially, no. you know, considering that, you know, the bosses are hedge fund managers and things like that. I think the truth is kind of yeah. ridden, ridden wide there. And yeah. if they, 
it, even if they do believe that, once the corporatization happens, God help them if they do an initial public offering and then if they but it becomes yeah. a fiduciary responsibility to constantly be increasing shareholder value. It's like yeah. the in, the incentives there are always going to, you can say as much artsy stuff as you want, but the incentives are always going to push you towards money yeah. and distinctly unartsy things. It's yeah. just going to produce a system that does that with ever increasing intensity. Mm. Um, yeah, but so, I, I, yeah. Love your, I love your framing about just, you know, there's there's got to be some human to human sense of like there's got to be a polite way to do this right and if it's going to if we really believe it's going to burn through every industry don't we want to do it as politely as possible you know don't we want <laughs> to have some human discussion that prioritizes human well-being um yeah as these things happen i think that yeah. framing is very very apt and like i said I, th I think we're likely to be seduced by good enough and i think as artists and creatives your goal is to remember that we were never aiming for good enough you know if you really want to make something like just don't just so quickly give up the sense that uh, you have nothing to offer that can't be done now because it's just actually it's i think not true at all indeed yeah. and uh yeah a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed this. And, this was a uh, blast. Yeah. Yeah. If I sound all depressed now, I'm just, I've been awake for ooh, the 15 hours now. Wow. That's a long time. <laughs> With the twins today. So. Yeah. Well, let's, let's wrap it up. Uh, Miles, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Uh, this was great. I mean, I know everybody's going to get a lot of value out of these thoughts. I certainly have. Um, and I hope we can do it again soon. Truly. Uh, these yeah, things are going to, yeah, these things are going we to, we should check both. back in in a few months and see what, if there's anything new to say, It'll I would fun. love that. I would really love or that. If, or if there's any really interesting, uh, discussions or honestly, if there was someone, God, I would, I would love to pick the brains about our questions about the sort of limits of the image space of AI. If anyone has any you know, with reference to the kind of absolute space yeah. of possible images. Like I, if there was anyone with that kind of specific knowledge who was interested in having a chat with two people in this field. Yeah, please hit us up. That'd be a lot of fun too. I, I, I forgot to mention, but um, I don't know if it's the website, just because the audience might be interested in this idea because we covered a lot of things and we kept kind of touching on it, but not going in depth. Um, I don't know if it's the same person who made the website you found when you were younger, but the website that covers this that I'm familiar with is a library of babble.info, which has yes, a, that's yeah, that's it. Okay, that, so no, that's not that's not it, but that is a, a telling of the same idea. That's really okay. good. So if anyone's yeah. interested in that, go check that out. It's library of babble.info. There's a few different explorations of the idea on that site. But um, the if you go to, if I remember the site correctly, there's a tab that just says images and then click universal slideshow. And that is a almost, it. you're not going to find anything. It's almost like an artistic expression in programming that that is possible. It lets you refresh the page and see endless slides of noise, but it, but it is a, a realistic expression of the idea that hidden within those infinite permutations of noise somewhere yeah. is a picture from every corner of the universe and every possible yeah, iteration there's, with there's every variation. This is a part of drawing that would have happened, you know, if you've been dropped on your head at age three and yeah. missed one week of school and become really terrified of a picture of a clown on the wall. Yeah, and, yeah. You, know, you know, it's just what I want people to feel and what inspires me as an artist, what I was talking about is the sheer complexity and size of this space and the mm -hmm. joy of the game of what do you want to see that we're all playing? Mm -hmm. That's where I feel the common ground is, is, you know, we, we are all, this is, art to me is not just a peripheral unnecessary thing like this gets at the kind of because the core question that i think you have if you're a secular person is an aesthetic question what kind of experiences do i want to have what kind of life yeah. am i looking to live 
you know, what would constitute a meaningful life? What am I supposed to do with the time that I have? Is incredibly similar to the questions that artists, whether they know it or not, are trying to tackle yeah. because they have this blank infinity of a box. I could see anything. What is what is worth seeing? Is there a value structure in here? Is there something that is worth more than a random scribble I could do? You know, think of the art movements that have been asking this question, you know, Jackson Pollock or different ways of trying to generate imagery and think conceptually about what we're doing. I'm so grateful for the history of modern art because I think it's created a time now where art making is as much of an open question as it's ever been. You know, as much as I rave about loving the 19th century, I would have hated to be an artist then because it's just so constrained in thinking and such a rigid value oh, yeah. structure of what would make the picture good and what you're meant to do. And, you know, I, I think you have to be excited about the sense that like, I, I don't sit around and come up with thesis on what I think I should make. I would never make anything interesting. Like to me, what I do is I sketch freely. I just dribble stuff out into my sketchbook. I like to say I do an impression of someone who has an idea. You know, they would probably pick up the sketchbook. <laughs> they would probably start drawing something now. And I find myself, okay, yeah, this is shit. This looks like a cle- this looks like a caricature of a Miles drawing. Oh, you put a hole in something. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, what if the hands? What if the hands were big? You know, and I'm I'm just spewing out nonsense. Uh-huh. And the process for me is that I I am just looking for what I'm talking about. That sense that something has something, and it might begin with a pose that to me has a kind of pathos to it. It captures a kind of um, it inspires a sense of empathy in me for the subject, or it feels uh, you know. And and then I start forming more. I start experimenting with distorting them. And most of it is just junk, like absolute junk. My sketchbooks are full of bad drawings of bad ideas. And I don't consciously decide what to draw. But what happens is that I will just one day something, I'm like that one. I don't know why, but that one. Mm -hmm. And that process, that selection of that one is not random. I don't think a human brain is capable of a random selection. Mm -hmm. It must reflect something. There's some reason I prefer that sketch that had jumped out from the other junk. And the best ones are when I have no idea what that reason is. And the actual creation of that artwork is an exploration of why, why did I want to draw this? Why is this meaningful to me? And the story for me develops and changes. And then it's so weird and, and connecting to other people for me when I didn't even know why I started this thing. And halfway through, I start forming a narrative and that starts, I start focusing the image, removing what's not necessary emphasizing you know that feeling or that that subtle story I'm hiding and then when I put it out there and share it and I see that other people get that that to me is so strange you know that because I because I really feel no sense of ultimate authorship over that and that to me is a way of connecting with other people and expressing Mm -hmm. myself and I, I just think there's so much that relies when you start pulling on your intuition, your gut feeling for a picture that you just feel you have to make, you're pulling on your whole life's history of who you are and where you come from, yeah. your preferences, you don't know where they came from. And I just, I don't think that can be so easily captured, even if we can capture the appearance of a drawing yet. You know, so I, I think there's still so much to say as an artist. And if you're just learning to draw, like, I'm really uncomfortable giving out advice. I know what a hard life it can be, but there's, there is part of me that just wants to scream, like, just fucking do it, you know, yeah. let's go. <laughs> no, I feel the same way. I just, so, I, I don't want to tell anyone to give up. I don't think anyone should yeah. give up. It's, no. it's, it's imposing yourself a bit there. We have to acknowledge that, but yeah, I don't, I, I, I through all of this, as everything's been coming up, I have not told anyone to give up. You know, I, I think no. everybody should keep making art and no matter what happens, art is so, I personally think engaging with the creative urge is so goddamn important. Mm. Like it basically and look, no it. one wants to say it's important because you think it makes you sound, you know, vain or maniacal or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe not your specific piece. You're not going to make the piece that saves the world. There's no mm-hmm. such thing. But you, the collective human expression of asking and answering this question together of, what is life about what is worth living and your specific voice on that you know just being a part of that conversation 
when I do imagine living in a society that just didn't have that going on, you, you know, like we, we so readily label the important jobs as the ones that directly affect survival, but we live in a time, you know, it is, it's a, the, the question of the age is what are we doing here? What is this about? You know, yeah. what I felt since I was a young person, when, when I was told that, you know, when an adult would say, you know, it was, it was important because we just have to go on. That was such an unsatisfying answer to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, like life is a big pyramid scheme. Oh, you give me meaning. Your parents say to you, and one day you'll have kids and they'll give you meaning. It's a pyramid yeah. scheme. You know, yeah. Like, As Alan Watts like, put it once, uh, it's all wretched, <laughs> no vomit. It's, it's like, to me, like we need, we need to be collectively it is, it is important to create stuff collectively and people yeah. do need it. People need those small moments of connection or just recognizing it. And it doesn't have to be like deep shit, you know, like I know I talk all seriously, but like work that is just really joyful or just acknowledging the small, beautiful things in the world or, yeah. you know, it's just really sweet or really, it can be really subtle. It doesn't, you know, like I have such a sensibility of the like ugh, melancholic drama. And that's, you know, that's just my neurotic way of being in the world. You know, it's got to be all some giant emotional catharsis for me to feel anything. I often think that's just, <laughs> you know, I, when I see people who can just paint something that is just so nice, like to me, that is incredibly valuable. I have no hierarchy that, you know, mm -hmm. art must be the suffering of the human condition or whatever. That's just my own personal trip, you know. But yeah. like, I think a lot of people get intimidated. So when I would talk to students about this, they'd be like, I don't really feel like I have anything big to say, but I would look at their work and they do. They, I think I'd just given off an air that it had to be like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, when like, it doesn't, you know, it can be, I feel like there are fan art artists out there who just like love pointing out like relationship dynamics that makes people feel, you know, it's just like an extremely fun fantasy or validating of you know like that kind of stuff it's like um so i, I love it all and if uh, if we can get more of it that's a good thing i just it's like i said i just want some respect for people's anxiety about what a big deal it is to feel your livelihood being threatened yeah and i don't think that's crazy i don't think so either yeah and i i think i'm i'm very hopeful that uh that will be respected more as the discussion continues and as these things go on yeah all right all right miles well i'm very aware of your time right. here yeah so i i want to let you go but uh, again thank you for being here you're the best man i hope we can yeah. check in in a few more months and see see how our thoughts have changed as time has gone on yeah and everyone out there tuck yourself in extra snug to bed tonight yeah and have a good sleep yeah the, the robots can't you. get you if you're tucked in <laughs> they can't get you yeah exactly all right thank you miles all right bye